Hey, what's up guys? I'm Aaron from Finkton Languages and this video is going to be about a language learning method that some researchers have found to be one of the most effective ways of learning a new language or possibly the single most effective way of learning a new language uh, depending on the researcher that you're reading. Um, and this is extensive reading which is exactly what it sounds like reading extensively or reading a lot. <clears throat> um, extensive reading uh, contrasts with intensive reading and I just made a video about this last week talking about the differences so I'm not, I'm not going to talk too much about that right now. Um, what I am going to say is that extensive reading um, it, it has to do with reading for enjoyment, reading things that you find interesting um, and it's not studying like intensive reading is. Um, it's reading for fun, just like you would normally do in your native language. Um, and one of the main proponents of this theory of language learning um, in the second language acquisition field is one of the most famous linguists and one of the most popular linguists that there are. His name is Stephen Krashen. Um, he's one of the most well-respected people in second language acquisition uh, and second language um, education. Um, and he wrote a book called Free Voluntary Reading. Now, he uses the term free voluntary reading in a very similar way uh, as to what I'm referring to as extensive reading. I think there's some small technical differences um, in the way that he uses these terms, but uh, he basically means exactly what I am saying when I say uh, extensive reading. And I'm just going to read you a quote from his book that he titled Free Voluntary Reading. Free voluntary reading may be the most powerful tool we have in language education. In fact, it appears to be too good to be true. It is an effective way of increasing literacy and language development with a strong impact on reading comprehension, vocabulary, grammar, and writing. It is also very pleasant. In fact, it is more than pleasant. It is extremely enjoyable. Free reading may also be an important part of the solution to two related problems, making the transition from elementary level to authentic language use, and from conversational language ability to academic language ability. Free voluntary reading works, I propose, because it is a form of comprehensible input delivered in a low anxiety situation. In this chapter, I briefly review the evidence for free voluntary reading, some practical issues, and even though it's hardly necessary, evidence showing that free reading is enjoyable. Obviously, free reading is enjoyable, um, and there's a lot of things to do uh, to talk about in this uh, little section that I just read from his book. Um, first of all, you have to know that anytime you mention Stephen Krashen, the first thing that comes to mind is going to be comprehensible input. All right? He's a very famous linguist and this is his claim to fame. Um, he proposed the hypothesis that has to do with comprehensible input. And one of the things that he says is that we do not learn languages by studying them. We acquire languages by being exposed to them and receiving lots of input. Input being reading and, and uh, listening, output being speaking and writing. All right. um, now, Krashen's comprehension hypothesis states that we acquire language and develop literacy when we understand messages. That is, when we understand what we hear and what we read, when we receive comprehensible input. And this is really good news um, if you believe in Krashen's theory, which I am inclined to believe most of it, um, just based off of my personal experience and experiences of people that I know. The traditional way of learning languages where you sit in a class and you do drills and you read a dusty old textbook and you just work on grammar and memorize flashcards all day, this is very difficult and it offers only a promise of delayed gratification. Now that's not to say that you can never study or you can never use intensive reading. I believe in both of those things. And um, I know there are people out there who take a very strong approach to the only comprehensible input. Um, I don't necessarily 
agree with that. Um, from my own personal experience, that hasn't been the best route for me. But comprehensible input and extensive reading have been extremely useful for me. All right, another big proponent of this is Steve Kaufman, uh, who many of you may know from his YouTube channel or from uh, marketing his app, Link. Link is an app that I personally use and I've done uh, a lot of reviews and I've mentioned it many times over the course of my channel, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it right now. Um, I will we'll just say that if you don't know what it is, Link is a website and an app that makes reading in your target language very easy. Um, you can import ebooks and uh, dictionaries and things like that into the app and it, it, it just really facilitates extensive reading. Now that we've talked about a little bit of the theory behind it and why I think it's so useful, um, how do you do extensive reading? Uh, the premise is very simple. You read and you read as much as you can. Okay. Um, you have to be careful though because you want to choose, you, ha you have to make sure you're choosing reading selections that are understandable. They have to be comprehensible to you. That means that they have to be at your level or only slightly above your level. Um, I've heard different numbers, but my suggestion is that as you're reading a book, you want to be able to understand 95 to 98% of what's going on. Okay, You don't want to be able to understand 100% because then you're really not pushing yourself. You're not experiencing or you're not being exposed to new vocabulary words and, and new grammar. So you don't want to be quite at that 100%, but you want to be close because if you're, you're, if you're only understanding 50 to 90% of what you read, it's studying. It's not going to be enjoyable. You're going to be doing a lot of guesswork. You're going to have to stop to look up a lot of words and it's just not going to be enjoyable. Okay, You want to get into that flow state where you're really having a good time going through your, your, um, your book or whatever you're reading. Okay, There's a lot of uh, tar uh, um, graded readers out there that you can find uh, suited to your level, whatever level you are at in your target language. Otherwise, uh, I personally just prefer to use authentic books that are designed for um, younger readers or, or children. So right now I'm reading Thai. I'm doing intensive reading in Thai using very basic children's books that you would read to a five-year-old or nine-year-old. Um, there's also um, short chapter books for young readers. Um, the Little Prince is one of my favorite ones that's easy to read and it's enjoyable and it's a cute story. Um, but it's long enough to facilitate extensive reading. And I have read The Little Prince probably five times uh, in French and uh, at least once or twice in other languages. And it's, it's just still really enjoyable to me every time I read it. So you wanna choose things that are enjoyable. You wanna read things that you're understanding almost, but not quite all of it. Um, and you really want to make sure you're, you're not interrupting the flow of reading. You don't want to stop and have to look up words every page or even every other page. You really want to minimize the amount of times that you stop to look up words or stop to try to understand something. Um, because every time you do that, you're getting out of your flow of reading um, and it's just gonna make things less enjoyable and you're not gonna get quite as far with your extensive reading. Um, and with that said, the one exception is that I would say uh, Link can kind of um, mitigate that a little bit when you use the Link website or the Link app because all it takes is just a simple click of your finger to see the definition. Um, but even in that case, even when I'm using Link, uh, I still try to click on those words as little as possible because even if it only takes an extra second, I really just want to um, focus on reading and not worry about understanding everything understanding will come with time. Um, so I try not to interrupt myself as much as possible. Um, and the really nice thing about this is you can read for long periods of time, uh, much longer than you can just sit and study a language or much longer than you can sit in class. Um, with intensive reading, you really don't wanna push your study sessions for more than like maybe half an hour or so. Um, I usually do them for about 10 minutes at a time or less. Um, but with extensive reading, you can read and you can spend time learning your language 
for really as long as you would sit and read a book in your native language. So if you have a hammock out in the back or you have a hot tub and you can just sit and relax or um, whatever you, you're doing, wherever you are, um, lay in bed at night and read for an hour before you go to sleep. Um, it can be really enjoyable and it's a very pleasant way of uh, furthering your target language skills without feeling like you're straining yourself or like you're really pushing. So that is my video on extensive reading. Now, I do highly encourage you to mix extensive reading with intensive reading. You want to find a balance in there. Um, and this week I'm going to be releasing a new video on intensive reading and the benefits of that and the ways to do that. So uh, keep an eye out for that video um, and thanks for watching. I'll see you then.